Okay, our our, uh, our discussion tonight is going to be based on the Ragatzav Ergon and Parshat Vayetze. Now, the the material that we have collected in five volumes called Safnat Paneach Ala Torah is is uh, drawn from the Ragatzav, the margins of the Ragatzav's Chumash. Um, what what happened was is that when the Raga uh after the Raga Trevor passed away, so his daughter and uh, um, uh, his daughter uh, went back to Eastern Europe. She was in Israel already. She was the she was uh, married to the Rav of Petach Tikva, and uh, and she went and photographed uh, a, a ton of things. I mean, apparently it's like thousands, uh, thousands of photos, uh, just page after page after page. Um, what what I uh, what I read, and I I might have mentioned this um, this last week, was that. They sent material to to a um, to relatives in the United States who lived in Peoria, Illinois, and and later on through a chance, you know, quotation marks, uh, a chance meeting with Rabbi Nachman Mendel Kasher in Peoria, so they they arranged to start publishing the material. Um, I don't know the inside story of all the material, but I do know that there uh, there was an institute uh, institute started in uh, Yeshiva University that published um, a number of volumes based on the Rugged Trevor's works. Um, this is one of them. I know there are other places that are publishing the Rugged Trevor's works. So um, that's a story, you know, behind the scenes story of of. Uh, of the rugged shovers, the rugged shovers writings that I am not 100% familiar with. Now, um, this piece brings out a whole different side of the rugged shover. Just a minute, I want to check the chat. Right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, right. Um, it's called Safnas Panea. First of all, Safnas Panea, uh, the rugged shover's name was Rabbi Yosef Rosen. So Yosef is Tzafnas Paneach. It is also very, very appropriate because uh, one of the challenges for understanding the Raga Tzavah's works is to try and lefa'aneach et tzafun, to try and un, to try and reveal and decode that which is hidden. Um, as uh, the Raga Tzavah, as Rav Zevin writes, was an excellent uh, Balmazbir. He was able to explain things extremely clearly, and that is all Balpe. However, when it came to his writing, his writing is super cryptic. So um, we have this uh, dissonance between the the extremely clear uh, educator and the extremely uh, hard to understand uh, writer. Um, Again, part of it has to do with trying to get in so much material into so uh, you know, such a little time and such a little space. So he would write these postcards full of full of marmacomos uh, and uh, source material. That that was sources, excuse me, not source material, but sources, and that would be like a responsive. Now. Um, Here's the way the this is on the on the top of the book. Um, now I want to first read the whole thing to you, so you get a feeling of of what the book says, and then what we're going to do is going to uh, expand on it and take we'll take every line and go into every single line. So that's what our our PowerPoint will will look like. If you're interested, by the way, uh, I mean, I will be on the screen um, uh, presenting, uh, uh, presenting according to the order of the PowerPoint, but I, I did also attach that um, 
to the file that I sent out today. So here, this is the way uh, this would read, if you were to pick this up from the Sefer. Um, now you'll notice the tiny little letters, the tiny little letters are footnotes. So what they did was they, uh, they expanded um, and, uh, and I drew on that when I, when I prepared this. They expanded it in the footnotes every time there's a quote from the Raga Trevor, so they tell you what the quote is. And every now and then they add explanations. He didn't want this. Ella Hashemli, God to me. Rakamo Be'eretz Yisrael, only like in Eretz Yisrael. Ayin, have a look at Tiny Stafyud. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mashke Be'atzmo, Lo Ayadei Shaliach. God waters it by himself, not through a messenger. Bezetzin Senet Haman. This is the container of the man. Shezeb HaKadosh Kodeshin, that's in the Holy of Holies. Mafteach Parashel Parnasa, Lo Nimsa La Shaliach. The key of Parnasa is not handed to a messenger. Vezeh Geder Kisei, and this is the category of a Kisei, of a throne. Gimel Ma'alot, three steps. Kamosh Katubi Yerushalmi, Sof Perak Gimel the Shabbos. Vezeh Chochma, and this is wisdom. Menorah, Shehu Gimel Ma'alot, that has three steps. Menorah, Menachos Daf Chavtet. Vezeh Tzel Be'er, Matzah Yaakov, Gimel Adarim. And this, by the, by the spring, Yaakov found three flocks. Vezeh Hachdenida, Daf Ayin Amadbet. This is Nida, Ayin Amadbet. Ba'in Ksubas, Samaches. Have a look there. Parnasa shomin ba'am. We assess through the father. Ayin sham bazevein kamakum harach. Have a look there. And this is not the time to expand upon that. Bezen nafgamina de Moshe ra'a kesher shel tefillin miachorav. And Moshe saw the knot of the tefillin from the back. Bezet dalad, and that's a dalad. Bezet sulam hanhagas kol haolam derech ilav alul. And the the um the ladder is the way of the whole world being run through cause and effect. Ach Yaakov lo nitratzeb. Azevi Yaakov was not uh, satisfied with this. Rak be menorah, only with the menorah. Chokhmah, wisdom. Kisei gimel chavakim kamavor. A chair with three rungs, uh, three steps, as has been explained. Vezeh geder kesher shel yad yud. And this is the, um, the category of the not of the hand, the yud. Ayin Rashi brachos daf chav gimel. Have a look at Rashi brachos daf chav gimel. The Shabbos daf samach bet ulechala os velo lacharim. To you assigned and not to others. Vehi nechlak gam kein rak le gimel. It's only divided into three. The shitas Rabbeinu Tam Tosfos menachos daf chav tes beis kotzi menakuda two points and a pe- and a point two uh, spitzes and a point dinariich deveim de Sanhedrin. For a boy writes them in Sanhedrin. Vezeh Gimel, and that's three. Uvezeh asi shaper di b'rabbeinu b'hilchos tefillin, and the words of our rabbi in hilchos tefillin work out well. Desasar atzmo, he contradicts himself. Yehu geter os ayin sham, if it's a letter. Have a look there. Uvezeh asi shaper di l'chala os dafka, and this works out well. It's only for you a letter. Uvezeh zacha Moshe l'vnei Moseh, Moshe merited this before his death. Vezeh shara chamishim, this is the 50th gate. Ayin mashakaz of Rosh Hashanah davchav alaf, Amud Beis. Vezet Suras Yaakov Bakise. This is the image of Yaakov and the throne. Vegeder Rabbi Akiva Menachos. Velaze Rakli Fnei Moso Hitir Nidui Shel Yaakov. Only before his death did he annul the vow of Yaakov by Yehuda that he made against Yehuda. Ayin Baba Kama Tzadi Bet. Have a look there. Ayin Shem Baze. The Yaakov is see called the Torah Kula Adi Moshe Mashiach. He as uh, he uh, attained. Um, uh, understood all of the Torah until the days of the Messiah. Aval Masha Asidli Chalif Vedorsha Mashiach, what will be transformed in the generation of the Messiah? Zegam Yaakov Lo Isig Yaakov himself didn't attain that. Vezeg Gimel Adorim Shamatza. These are the three uh, flocks that he found. So this is the kind of a cryptic writing that that paper is is full of. And so what I would like to do is, based on the uh, footnotes. Um, and uh, and uh, adding some material, I would like to um, to share an expanded version of this. Um, and we'll find that this whole piece, it, the Ruggish River develops uh, an idea, a concept, and uh, I think there'll be, uh, uh, in general, about four sections. And let's start with the post problem in the Pasuk. 
So Yaakov in, in this coming parsha, parsha's Vayetze. So, so it says Yaakov makes an oath, makes a vow. If God will be with me, Shmarani, this is, this is after the vision of the, of the ladder. And he will watch me in this way, that I'm traveling. He'll give me bread to eat and, and clothing to wear. I will return peacefully to my father's house. And God will be to me, God. This stone that I have placed as a matzeva, as a, as a, as a one stone pillar, uh, it will be the house of God, and everything you give me, I will give a tenth. Now, those words, Vayashem Lilo Lokim, are difficult seemingly. God will be my God. Who is he talking to? person who's having prophetic visions. So what does this mean? So this, this is, a, is, a, is, is one of the classic uh, disputes amongst the Mepharshim. Rashi, so everybody has a way of, so what does it mean God will be a God to me? So Rashi explains, She'achul shmo alai mitchil sof. I'm just bringing this to see the contrast between what the Raja Chor is going to say. Um, Rashi says, um, based on the on the promise to Avram, which was liot lecha lelokim or lezaracha karecha, to be you a god and to your descendants. So it's an allusion to that, and in effect, Yaakov is saying God will be without an exception. Everybody in our family will be. Uh, will be connected to God, like, like the promise made to Avram. The Ram, now, so, so, but then this ends up being part of the oath. And if uh, my, my whole family will be uh, uniformly connected to HaKadosh Baruch so then, et cetera, et cetera. So sure enough, Rashi follows that through his, through his commentary and uh, and and then later on he does go back to and give that and give that uh, offering. Ramban learns this whole thing differently. If I will, it's it's not it's not a condition, but rather it itself is a nether. When he says Hashem will be my God, what he means is I vow to go back to Eretz Israel, and there in that chosen land, I will I will serve Hashem. That's what it is. If God, Hashem will be my God, and he quotes the Gemara in Ksuvos that says, anybody who lives in the Chutz Lord's Dome, Kamisha, in Lo Eloah, Eloka, and it's as if he doesn't have a God. What does that mean? So when it says, God, Hashem will be a God, that means I'll be living in Eretz Yisrael. Rashbam, simple explanation. Hashem will be my God. He'll help me. He'll act God-like towards me. He'll help me in all my actions. Svorno pointing out, uh, focusing on the Elohim part, that it's judgment. As yeye Hashem ledayan in lo avdeo b'chol kochi. Meaning, if I don't do what I'm saying, so then Hashem can judge me. I'm taking on myself, I'm makabal on myself that, that uh, I am willing for Hashem to treat me b'minus the The, the Ragachavar is closest, if you ask me, to the Ramban of all these different explanations, but I think he's not identical with the Ramban. Let's look at, let's start from the beginning. You with me here? What he's doing is <coughs> focusing on these two words, Vaya Hashem Li Lalokim, God will be to me. So what does he say? Um, There was a vision of a ladder. Lo ratzaze. Yaakov didn't want the ladder. Rather, Ela Hashem li. God should be to me, for me. What does that mean? What What is that expression that Hashem should be for me as a God? And how is it contrasted with the ladder? So, now, just to point out, there are two different, uh, there, there's two difficulties here. Number one is, what is this expression, Hashem, Ayah Hashem, Lilo, Lokim? But number two, 
what is the point of the ladder in that vision? Um, so the Rav focuses on Rakamo Eretz Yisrael, that Yaakov wanted an Eretz Yisrael-like experience. What is that? Or an Eretz Yisrael-like relationship with God. What does that mean? So let's look at this Gemara Tainus. Tanarabonan. Eretz Yisrael nivreis tchila, v'cholam l'kulam nivra basof. Eretz Yisrael was created first, the rest of the world afterwards. Shinemar ad lo asa Eretz v'chutzot Eretz v'chutzot. Um, Eretz, the Chutzot, first Eretz, then Chutzot, first Eretz Yisrael, and then everything outside. But then, here's the, and here's the focus, Eretz Yisrael, Mashkeu Ta Kodesh Baruch Hu Be'atzmo, God uh, has, he waters, meaning he has rain fall on Eretz Yisrael by himself, meaning direct Hashkacha. And the rest of the world, Ayyadei Shliya, the rest of the world is through a messenger, indirectly. Shenemar, Hanosin Matar Pane Aretz, Eretz Yisrael, Vishulach Maim Al Pane Chotzot, I hope I've, I pronounced that correctly, meaning through a Shaliach. Um, the Pasuk says, Hanotin Matar Al Pane Aretz, and Rashi explains Eretz Yisrael. Vishulach Maim Al Pane Chotzot, Al Yedei Shaliach. So, apparently, the latter is a, sim, is a symbol of an indirect connection with God, whereas Yaakov didn't want that. So when Yaakov got up from the vision of the ladder, so number one, this is the place of God, but he's saying, he's saying to HaKadosh Baruch I don't want the ladder. I want a direct relationship with you, like, like in Eretz Yisrael. And then, Vizet Sin Senes Haman. This is the bottle of the man. Well, in, in, uh, when the man first appears on the scene, when Am Yisrael is traveling in the Midbar, in, uh, in, in the Shalok, so it says, Hashem at the end commands, uh, It should be as a safekeeping, it should be watched for all generations. So they should see the, the bread that I fed uh, that I fed you in the desert when I took you out of Egypt. Take a container, ten omer man, and and put some uh, put an omer of man there. Put it before Hashem. So just like Hashem commanded, Yaakov, Aaron, Aaron did that, and he put it right there before the before where the where the where the edut was, where the edut was. Um, so says says the Rabbi Trevor, it's, it's in the Kodesh Kodeshi. Now, what's the tzinsen and Haman is a symbol of God feeding us directly, and it's in the Holy of Holies, which is the most direct connection with God. And sure enough, Yirmiyahu, generations later, um, as the Pasuk says, Lidoro Sechem for all generations. Vulimos Yirmiyah Hanavi, Shabashash Amar Yirmiyah Lisro, Mipnema Rashi brings this on Chomet, by the way. Mipnema in a Tamoski Matora. So he said to him, Why aren't you involved in Dora? I'm not about many parnas. How are we going to make a parnasa? Otsilem Tsuchi Shimani pulled out the man, the Amarlem, Hador Atem Rahu, Devar Hashem. Look, your, your forefathers were involved in Torah and Hashem took care of them through the man. And if you will be involved in Torah, God will be Maparnas you from the man. So what Yaakov wanted was a direct connection. Just like Parnasa in Eretz Yisrael works directly, Hashem puts the rain not through a shliya, and that's the symbol of the of the man. This is expressed in another Gemara um, in Tainus. Menasati metar tzachem biito yorel makos. Amar Rabbi Yochanan shalosha maftechot biyadosh al Hakadosh Baruch Hu shalonim surviyad shaliyah. There are three keys that are not handed to any messenger. Ve'eloin maftech shal geshami maftech shal chayim maftech shal tzvi asamesi. 
So rain, childbirth, and and the resurrection of the dead. What's the pasuk? Mafteach shel gashomim tichti v'iftach Hashem lecha asot zaro ato et hashamayim latet metar etzecha beito. Hashem will open up his treasure to heaven, meaning Hashem himself. Now, the Ragatubra continues. Vezeg geder kisei. This is the category of the kisei, or the, or, the, or the the concept of the kisei. Now, here we dwell, we, we draw on the commentary of Rav Kasher. I forget it's Rav, this is Rav Kasher or his son. Rav, the father was Rav Menachem Mendel Kasher, who was a, a Ger Hasid. Um, and his son, I think, they were Moshe Shlomo Kasher. So, um, says the says he says here in the commentary, she'inu mahut le'atzmo. The throne, the chair, is not in essence, is not something in and of itself. It relates to and is battle to the one who's sitting it. So the chair, the throne, is, is the symbol of being battle to something else. The Zegeter Kisei. Gimel Ma'alot. It had, now a chair has three steps. Um, like in the Yerushalmi Perik Gimel de Shabbos, like it says in the Yerushalmi. Now, there's a Yerushalmi that talks about a certain a certain um, uh, container, giant, very large container. And the question is, is it Muktzah Shabbos? That's a Gemara in Yerushalmi at the bottom of the page here. And the Beis Ravyana Yamrim Ad Gimel Kakisei Mikan Ba'elach Kesulam. Up to three steps, it's still a Kisei. From three steps and on, it's already considered a ladder. Now, that numerology here is important because what the Rav is going to see is he's noticing in these different Gemaras, and he's going to collect three different Gemaras, that three is a symbol of direct connection. The Kisei has three steps going towards it. Everything that comes directly through Hashem is, is described as, as having this three connection. Now, I don't know why three, Dafka, um, but the Rebbe Trevor sees that three appears there. Bezeh Chochma, the very end of the top of the page. Bezeh Chochma, Menorah. Now, the Menorah is connected with wisdom. Uh, that's coming from a Gemara in Baba Basra. Now this actually, we thank the the, uh, the Kasher family for this. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Yachim Yadrim. Somebody who wants to become wise should daven towards the south. V'shiyashir Yatspin. Somebody who wants to become uh, wealthy should daven towards the north. V'simanich Shulchan Batzafon Omenar Vadaro. And the way to remember this is. The shulchan was in the north, and the menorah was in the south. Now, we don't do either of these. The common uh, universal practice, excuse me, is to daven towards Yerushalayim, wherever Yerushalayim happens to be uh, in relation to you. But, but in the, uh, it sounds like in the Gemara's time, people could choose which, they, which way they want to daven. So if you want to connect up with wisdom, so you daven towards the south. But the main point for, for the Rebbe Trevor is that the menorah is connected with wisdom, and the menorah had three steps coming up to it. Even haitalif ne menorah uva shalosh malor, and he had three steps. Shalei akoin omenu metivet enero. Three steps. Three steps indicates this is the direct connection of wisdom from a kodesh baruch to man. Just like the kise, the throne, which is which is totally bottled to a kodesh baruch has three steps. So also the menorah has three steps. And this. By the by, the well that Yaakov eventually went to had three uh, flocks of sheep, and that's what it says later on. Vine be'er basade, vine sham shlosha edreitzon rov tzimalad. Just a second, there's a comment in the chats. 
Is it malot? A directional symbol. Upwards. Very nice. Very nice. But but that's that's one of the. Okay, sorry. Uh, be be well. Be well, Zeb. But this is um, like in the pasuk lota aleb malot al mizbechi. So you should not go up. It's the end of of, uh, of Yisrael. You should not go up with steps to my Mizbeach. Rather, you should use a ramp. But the menorah does have uh, steps. In modern uh, language, we use we use uh, madrigot. Um, but in the Chumash, I think that's I think Malot is uh, is steps. Now, the same three. Um, Symbolism exists for Yaakov, meaning Yaakov's request for the direct connection, the fact that he met these three uh, flocks of sheep, apparently that's what the Rugged Trevor is saying, is that he, he, uh, he encountered that right away. Now, he, the, the Rugged Trevor collecting from all over the place the concept of a direct connection with Hashem. So, there's a whole agadat about Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanania, who was considered the wisest of the wise. He was considered uh, a symbol of being an extremely wise person. So there's a whole uh, discussion when he, when, that he had with the, with the wise men of Alexander, with the, with the Jews of Alexander. So he came to Alexander, uh, Alexandria, excuse me, came to Alexandria, and they asked him a bunch of questions. So one of the things they asked him was, um, there were three things they asked him about Derek Heretz. What should a person do to become wise? So, so Rabbi Shua answered, So, so be involved in a lot of learning and do minimal, do minimal business. Many tried that, it didn't work. Rather, so he, he, uh, he, he tweaked the answer. You should ask, you should you should pray to the one who wisdom is his. God gives wisdom. From his mouth is is knowledge and understanding. And um, the uh we have he brings down a a brisa with a mashal mashal malach basav adam shasa suda lavadav u'mishagir leohavav mimachal lefanav. He gives shirayim for what's in front of him, meaning the platter that's right in front of him. He gives to his close friends. He makes a suda for all of his uh, for all of his subjects, but but for those close close to the king, he gives them the royal platter. Uh, so that's mipiv dasus funa. And then they ask him similarly, um, What should a person do and become wise? So he told them, again, conventional wisdom, do a lot of business and, uh, and, do, and be honest in your business dealing. Be trustworthy in your business. So many have done this. Uh, it didn't work. You should pray to the one who with who who wealth this is. Shenemar liya kesa v'liya zahav. Silver and gold is mine. My kamash v'landa habalo halosag. One without the other is not going to work. Meaning you need to you need to have for wisdom. You you need serious learning, but you also need tefillah. For for wealth, you you need uh, honest business dealings. Uh, and a lot of score, a lot of merchandise, but you need to daven. So wisdom and parnasa can come directly from a Kodesh Baruch. Oops. Now, now, now he he adds the ayin ksuvas daf samachas parnasa shamin ba'av, and and he elaborates here in the footnotes. When it comes to Parnassah, we assess the father. Meaning, we, when we're taking care of the Parnassah that a daughter gets, so we assess it based on the father. Um, you go based on... Now, his, he, he wants to say here that, and this is, I wasn't 100% clear on this, 
but he wants to say in the footnotes that the main thing is that for Parnassa, you go after the mashpia, the one who is giving over the Parnassa. So it's by analogy, uh, just like father, daughter. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you go after HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You want to get, says the, this, this is the way the Raga is going in this whole piece. What Yaakov wants when he says, Vaya Hashem li lalokim, is I want a direct Parnassa connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, straight from the mashpia. I think that's what he means. Vizen Afkamina, I think the Nun Mem is Mafkamina, because that's the difference between Moshe and Yaakov. Moshe Rabbeinu Ra'a Kesher Shel Now, up until now was Yaakov wanted a direct connection. The direct connection is symbolized by the Kisei, the Menorah, and Parnassa and Eretz Yisrael. The three is a common thread through all those kinds of things. I'm not sure why, but it is. Now he contrasts um, Moshe Rabbeinu and Yaakov. There's a difference between Yaakov Aminu and Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu ra kesher shel tefillin me'achorov v'zed dalet. He saw the, the kesher of tefillin from behind. Well, that's the kesher of the rose, which is in the shape of a dalet. Four. But remember, v'zed sulam hanhagas kol haolam derech ilavalu. Remember that four, said the Yerushalmi, was already a ladder, as opposed to a kisei, which is three. So Moshe Rabbeinu saw the four knot, not the three knot. Moshe Rabbeinu only saw that, that sulam, hanhagas kalolam derech the way the world works through cause and effect, cause and effect. Yaakov was not satisfied with that. Rather, and that's the point of this pasuk. Yaakov got up from the dream and he said, I don't want the sula. I want the haya Hashem lila elokim. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu responded to him by showing him the three flocks of sheep, that he will have this direct connection with Hashem. Rashi, Rakba Menorah, he wanted the menorah, wisdom straight from Hashem, Chochmah. Kisei. And, and why does he keep saying the Kisei? Because, because we have uh, an Agadita that he's going to quote later on, that Yaakov Avinu's image appears on the Kisei Yaakov. And um, Kisei is Gimel Chavokim. It's three stages, three steps. Now, three rungs, maybe. Um, I checked that Chavokim. Chavokim seem to be rungs of a ladder. V'zeg better kesher shel yad yud. The contrast with the Dalid is the yud. And the yud is symbolic or, or indicative of this direct connection. Have a look in Rashi Brachos Daf Chav Gimel. What's in Rashi Brachos Daf Chav Gimel? When it talks about the, uh, the Kesher, so Rashi talks about the yud, which is on the top of the Tefillin Shel Yad, which is our yud. Um, and have a look at Shabbos Daf Samach Beis. Well, Shabbos Daf Samach Beis says that the three different letters, the Shin, the Dalit, and the Yud, are Halach Lemoshim Yisine. So he's telling, talking about the Yud of Tefillin. Uh, that's a drasha. Um, as I'll say that... Um, based on the Pasuk of Ayala Chalaos, that it should be a sign for you, meaning it's not um, visible like the shin of the, uh, and the Tefillin Shal Roshar, but the Tefillin Shal Yad, we in general cover it up. And so that Yud is usually covered up. Now, um, so the, 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 what comes out of this is that um, the letter, this is the Gemara of Vayala Chala Os Falola Cherim, the letter Yud has these three components according to Tosfos. Um, this is where it talks about the Tefillin. Um, Tosva says, 
when the Gemara talks about the uh, Kutzer Shel Yud, the point of the Yud. So Rashi says the Kutzer Shel Yud is the right leg of the Yud. Tosa says without the right leg, it's not a Yud. So Kutzer Shel Yud must be something else. So he says it's the top of the Yud. So according to Tosfos, there's a need, there's the dot of the Yud, which is in the middle. There's the right leg of the Yud. And then there's the Kutzel Shel Yud, which is the spitz, the point, which is coming upwards. So there are three components to a Yud, according to Tosfos. That's what he's getting at. Menachos um, Tafchavtes, Beis Kotzim, Unakuda. A point, and then two spitzes, one on the bottom, one on the top. Dinari um, de Sanhedrin. Now, what is that? There's a pasuk that says Tosas quotes it that a child could write, or a youth could just could write a uh, a letter. How could a youth write a letter? So, if you throw a stone at a wall, so it'll leave just a, a big dot. And that's a yud. So says Tosis, it's like a yud, but it's not 100% a yud. A yud really needs these three components. That's what Tosis says. That, that, uh, below yud match. Meaning when a child throws, it, it, it says, it doesn't mean <clears throat> he could mamish write a letter that would be a halachically uh, 100% yud, but it would be like a yud. Now, this is a, uh, this is, he, he, he hops here, the rugged shaver, resolving a steer in the Rambam, or, or a difficulty in the Rambam. The Rambam, when he lists the tefillin, the halach l'moshe misinai of tefillin, so we saw before that, uh, that it seemed like, um, just a second, the Gemara in Shabbos said, Abaye said, Shin shall tefillin alach l'moshu misinai, Dalad shall tefillin alach l'moshu misinai, and the Yud of tefillin is alach l'moshu misinai. Um, now, Tosu says, Velo garsin and Dalad v'yud shall tefillin. So Tosu says that those, uh, the Dalad and Yud of tefillin, are uh, the shin is Allah Lamashim Sinai, but the Dalit and Yun are not. Again, it's the shin on the on the Tfilin Batim, the Dalid not, and the Yud not. So the Gemara seems to imply, the text that we have seems to imply that that's a uh Allah Lamashim Sinai. And also says those that's not accurate. But the Rambam uh on the one hand, when he lists the halachas, Lamosha Misina of Tfilin, so he lists the Kesher Dalit. He says, Shmona halachas yesh b'maiset Tfilin, kulan halach Lamosha Misina, ulufikach kulan ma'akos. There are uh, eight halachas that are all halach Lamosha Misina. They are all essential. Bim shina ba'achas me'am pasal. If you do one of them incorrectly, so it, it invalidates the Tfilin, ve'elu heim. And one of them he lists is, v'shia Kesher Shalem Kesher Yadua Ketzeras Dalit. It should be a uh, uh, the well-known knot, which is like a dalit, and he doesn't mention a yud there. So the Rambam seems to list a dalit as Allah l'mosh misina, but not a yud. Aye, but later on he does mention the yud when he talks about tying the tefillin. So he says, "Machnis ritzua shel rosh." Be second, there was a comment. What level of those which are not Allah Lamashina Sina according to the opinion of Allah? Would it be standard or abundant? Good question. Good question. Yeah, I mean according to Tosus. To Rabbanan Minag, I don't know. I don't know. That's a nice question. Um maybe the maybe the Ahronim and Atosus clarify that. I don't know. Um by the way, I've been using I've been using recently the the Masifta Gemara has in the back of it, first of all, it's this massive, massive, massive set. Um, in the back, they have Yalkut Beurim. They have comments 
they collect it when it when when uh, commentators say anything about every Rashi and commentators say everything about every Tosus. So if there's ever something where you're looking for a uh, a reference work that is you know encyclopedic in terms of of mentioning um, anything somebody might have said about a, a Rashi or a Toso. So the Masif the Gemara is very helpful. The boys in the back, yeah. These are the boys in the back. But it's like a whole uh, a cast of thousands in the back. Rabbi Hirschfeld said that his son worked on one of the uh, Masif the Gemara. Now, so the Rambam, the Rambam uh, says, Umachnis Ritzua Shel Rosh be Tovar Shalom. I'm not sure what that is. Umakif be Minas Rosho. Okay, ties the dollar knot. You have to know it. You can't just write it out. You've got to show it. So you also tie a yud. So the Ramam does mention the Kesher Shal Yad. So he mentions the Dalit and the Yud when he talks about tying the Tzillin, but he does not list the Dal the Yud in the Halach Lamosh Misinais. So says the Rabbi Chavar, Shaper, Ostafka. This is the way the Ramam learns that that uh, Gemara that the the Dalid is an Os that is publicly shown. And the yud is an os, but it's only lechal os. It's only for you. Um, I think I got that right. Um, now, that ends section uh, section two. That um, the yud versus the dalit of the tefillin. The dalit of the tefillin is four, and that is a, if you will, a lower level. And Moshe saw that. Uh, the yud of the tefillin is that higher level. It's that direct connection. It's the three-part yud, like he developed through these, through this, uh, through the tosfos. That uh, tosfos's approach to the kutzo shal yud is that it's the, it's the protrusion, the pointy protrusion at the top of the yud, in addition to the big dot of the yud, in addition to the right uh, protrusion going down. That's the uh, what the leg of the yud. But Moshe Rabbeinu did eventually reach that level that Yaakov was at. Initially, Yaakov, ya- Moshe Rabbeinu only saw the dollar. But in the very end of Moshe's life, he did. Moshe Moshe, before he passed away, this is the 50th gate. So um, the, the Gemara, this is referring to a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah. Moshe was given all for all 50, except for one. Now, uh, that sounds like um, an angel, Elohim, or perhaps it's, it's the godly wisdom the direct wisdom coming from God. But Moshe Rabbeinu before his death did marry that, merit that 50th level. Initially, Moshe Rabbeinu did not. And he only saw that Dalit that, uh, that not. Yaakov This all is the image of Yaakov on the Kisei that comes out of a Gemara in Chulin that says that the Malachi Elohim Olim Vyardimbo, they would go up they saw the image of Yaakov on the Kisei HaKavod, and then they went down, and they saw Yaakov down here on this earth. So that's, Yaakov was on the Kisei, because the Kisei is something that is totally bottled to HaKadosh Baruch and has a direct connection with it. And that's also the getter of Rabbi Akiva. This is also what Rabbi Akiva represented in the Gemara Menachos. So that he says, um, beautiful Gemara, that uh, when when uh, Moshe Rabbeinu went up to heaven, so he found a Kodesh Baruch who was tying crowns to the to the uh, to the letters, 
And he said, Rabbanu Shalom, who is the one that's, that's forcing you to tie those crowns on the letters? So he says, There's somebody who, at the end of many generations, um, I think so. I think his image was Kisit, and, and Yosef, the, Yosef, Yaakov's image was on, his, on the Kisit during, the, during his lifetime. I think so. I think that's what that Medrash is saying. Um, it means Yaakov was totally battled to Akhar Shporcho. Um, I think Chazal say something like Avos Hin Hin Amarkova, similar thing. Yeah, whatever that means. Good. <laughs> so, um, so uh, said uh, said Hakadosh Baruch Hu to Moshe Rabbeinu. Yes, there's somebody generations from now. His name is Akiva Ben Yosef, and he's going to darshan on every letter and every little coats, uh, uh, piles and piles of, of mounds of halachas. So, uh, so Moshe Rabbeinu says, show them to me. So he says, goes back. So he sat eight rows back in the shear, and he didn't know what they were talking about. So Moshe Rabbeinu felt bad. Uh, and then they came to something, and his Talmidim said to Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi, where do you, where do you know this from? So he said, it's a halacha of Moshe Misina. So Moshe Rabbeinu was consoled. Then he went to HaKadosh Baruch, he says, this is your bonus home. You have such a person? What are you giving the Torah through me? Give it through him. Omer lo shtok kachala b'machshava be quiet. This is the way it came up in my mind to do things. I'm on the front of Rabbana Shalom. Harisani Tarasa, Areni Scharo, you showed me his Torah, now show me his reward. Amalo Chazorla Arachorecha, look back. Chazorla Achorov, he looked back. Rasha Sheshoklin Besaro Bemakolin, he saw that they were, they were measuring the weight, they were weighing his, his flesh in the in the marketplace, meaning Rabbi Akiva was brutally tortured by the Romans. I'm the front of Rabbi Shalom, Zok Torah, Vazus Chorah, this is Torah, this is its, 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 uh, its reward. Amr le shtok kachala b'machshava, be quiet, that's what, that's what came up. Meaning, Moshe Rabbeinu saw Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva reached that 15th level. Yaakov Avinu reached that 15th level. And by the way, Yaakov and Akiva are, are seem, seemingly related to the same Shorish. But Moshe Rabbeinu, before his death, did reach that level. Because it says in the Gemara that for 40 years that Israel was going through the Midbar, so Yehuda's bones were, were so to speak, rolling in his coffin. Until Moshe Rabbeinu and, and prayed, and he said, Rabbon Shalom, who caused Reuven to admit it was Yehuda? who admitted uh, in the Tamar episode, Miyad Shema Hashem Kol Yehuda, Hashem heard the voice of Yehuda, and, and, then, the, and then the punishment ended. Now, ya- Yaakov said, um, Yehuda said to Yaakov, if I don't bring him back, Bechatasila Vikoleami, all my days. Uh, so, uh, so Moshe Rabbeinu, so where was Moshe Rabbeinu all these 40 years? The answer is only when Moshe Rabbeinu was on the level of Yaakov, was on that 50th level, which was only before his death. Only then was he able to annul the vow of Yaakov. Before that, he was not able to annul the vow. Now, and uh, just, um, the Yaakov, he see Kola Torah Kula Yaakov, he, he attained all of the Torah until the days of the Mashiach. But, and this is the final comment that he has, what will eventually be transformed, I don't know what that means, in the generation of the Mashiach, Zegam Yaakov Loisi. Yaakov didn't attain that either. And these are the three flocks that he saw, and that's a whole other piece where he developed. So those are the three generations in the beginning of the Messianic era. And that was something that Yaakov himself did. Okay, that is what I wanted to share with you. Um, the uh, uh, partially cryptic, but uh, elucidated helpfully by the uh, Kasher family, Rabbi Nachman Mendel Kasher and his uh, and his descendants. I think his son Rabbi Moshe Shlomo Kasher, and. Um, the uh, the main theme of that Pusik is that Yaakov wanted the direct connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, 
both in 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 wealth in parnasa uh in uh in wisdom and that direct connection is symbolized by a number of 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 things that are connected with the three uh the menorah the kisei and the yud of the tefillin rabbi akiva and Yaakov Avinu reached that very, very intense, high, direct level, the 50th level. Moshe Rabbeinu did not until the very end of Moshe Rabbeinu's life. But even Yaakov Avinu, there's something that he understood the Torah up to the times of the Mashiach, but the Torah of the generations of the Mashiach, that's something, those are the three flocks of sheep that he sees as the parsha continues. What Yaakov did not want, and this is an interesting parish, uh, of the rugged shover, what he did not want was the ladder. The ladder signifies a connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is through cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, an indirect connection. Moshe and Yaakov Avina wanted the direct connection. And uh, that's symbolized by, by Yaakov Avina being on the Kisei HaKavod, which is totally bottled to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, something that has a, a totally direct connection. So that is what I wanted to 